in big lots. It has filed for bankruptcy and the shares are tanking after years of declining sales and closing locations. The discount retailer agreed to sell its business to private equity investor Nexus Capital. We have Bloomberg's distressed debt. And how does the big lots story compare to what else you're seeing in the world of retail? working is that is that hopefully that's working okay hi guys usually i wait for the whole first day hearing on these bankruptcy cases before i make a video like this but i think given the news that we've seen come out it's pretty obvious where things are going already big lots has a stocking horse bidder out with the bidder being nexus capital for 707.5 million dollars now, given we're still going to have a bidding process and everything like that, maybe they could get more money, but that seems about where in the ballpark it is. After all, they've probably been spending all summer shopping the company around at this point. What this means for shareholders is, well, sorry, you're probably not getting anything in this. Let's be honest here. Even though the last quarter results show that shareholder equity was still positive, I get the feeling this deal was put in place because well before they started to get the results for this upcoming quarter that they were going to report shortly, they knew that the company was bending insolvent. It was best to get a deal while the getting was good before the company went totally shit like, oh, I don't know, Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that. <laughs> And I do think that is the real story of these retail outlets like Bed Bath & Beyond, Big Lots, and a bunch of others that we've seen start to struggle, especially these mall retailers more so than, say, like your Big Lots or your Bed Bath & Beyond examples that I just gave. Companies that are having trouble in this new retail environment and, more importantly, have been suffering because of COVID. That is is the big thing if you look at big lots financial statements especially its income statement you'll notice that the company was doing fine heading into covid and even to a certain extent was doing okay during covid it's when the reopening happened that things really started to get bad for big lots and some of these other retailers because of the lockdowns, you had them have to take on a lot of debt to pay bills and not have a lot of income coming in the door. And then once the economy started to falter, I mean, everyone was talking about the reopening and everything was going to be fine because everyone was going back to the stores and all this stuff. And nope, the debt load just proved to be too much. And go figure, all these lockdowns and everything have economic effects and we are now starting to see them especially with the decline in retail sales and other economic factors as we head into this recession it seems to be the part of things that people are underestimating with this that there are knock-on effects from deciding to shut down the economy for a year and a half and then try and kick start it back up and everything like that retailer macy's became the latest victim of the strong and resilient u.s labor market reporting more declining sales and struggling to get consumers to come in and spend. Not strong and resilient consumers, consumers pulling back on spending, knowing what comes next isn't a soft landing. The line that we're now drawing doesn't just end where it is either. The slowdown in jobs doesn't just magically stop where the Federal Reserve wants it to. Since this line is now pointing downward at a more substantial pace, the implications are very different, not that we have to tell Macy's. Basically, the new payroll report data says what we've known the entire time. The real slowdown got started around the middle of last year and maybe as early as July, and it hasn't stopped all the way through March of this year. That is the real story of Big Lots. That's the real story of the economy as things continue to weaken. And it's why I continue to be Team TLT. As the stock market continues to pick up on the signs of the weakening economy, you're going to see retracement. You're going to see people run to safety towards bonds and an increase in the face value of those bonds. And it'll give a great opportunity still, I think, to take the bonds as they are right now. Fed rate cuts are coming. The face value of those bonds will come up. And once we get through this period, like most recessions, they don't last forever. 
you can then take those profits on those bonds flip it over get back into the stock market because the natural growth of the economy is up and to the right so this is going to be a continuing trend big lots is not the first bankruptcy it won't be the last bankruptcy and you're going to continue to see future weakness in the economy at least in the short term as this correction continues in this post-covid world but it's not going to last forever that's the key thing to remember here Prepare to be defensive when it comes to your investments and get ready for the future opportunity that's coming down the road. Till next time, I'll catch you folks around.